today we will be performing examination of the peripheral vascular system and i'll be walking you through each of its steps assalamu alaikum my name is dr shahzeb may i know your name please ahmed all right ahmed for this examination i'll be examining your upper arms your legs your abdomen and your neck and i'll be needing exposure of these areas is that okay with you yeah i'm okay with you All right. I'll be using my hands and my stethoscope to feel the pulses. Is that also okay? Yeah, okay. You'll not be feeling any pain or discomfort during the procedure. If you do so, then kindly let me know. Shall we begin now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. Examination of the arterial system involves three components: inspection, palpation, and auscultation. We'll be performing all the three components on the upper limbs, the neck, the abdomen, and the lower limbs. On inspection, we need to look at the general look of the patient to see if there are any peripheral stigmata of arterial disease. These include pallor, cyanosis, any signs of ulceration between the fingertips and at the ends. We need to inspect carefully at each component. We can also look at the foot. and we need to look in between the spaces of the foot to see if there are any ulcerations or gangrene and then we can compare the temperature of both the limbs upper and lower the temperature assessment is done with the back of the hands any abnormal cold temperature does indicate arterial insufficiency that ends our inspection to assess the capillary refill we need to check at the pulp of the digit we should compress it and let it go a normal capillary refill is less than 2 seconds this should be done for the lower limbs both and for the upper limbs we'll now move on to palpation palpation is done using all the major arteries of the body for all for both the upper limbs the neck abdomen and the lower limbs in the upper limbs radial ulnar and brachial arteries are the ones that we need to palpate for radial artery we palpate it using the three finger method like most arteries we we'll assess for the rate looking at the time and making sure that we get a right measure at the same time we we'll assess the rhythm and character and volume of the pulse the character is best judged on the carotids the other three parameters can be judged on any artery we'll now move on to ulnar artery and then finally the brachial artery we'll do the same with the other limb as well but one thing that we need to check for is the radio radial delay this involves simultaneous palpation of both the hands for the radial pulses and assessing if there is a delay in between them that ends the palpation of the upper limbs now we'll move on to the neck in the neck the carotid artery is important to palpate it helps us assess the volume and character The carotid is best felt between the sternocleidomastoid and the laryngeal cartilages by placing a thumb in between them. We should only assess one carotid at a time. We should feel for a thrill and for an aneurysm if it is there, which is an expansile mass that lifts off your finger. This should be repeated on the other side as well. In the abdomen, it is important to palpate the aorta. which can be palpable in very thin lean individuals and to assess for any expansile mass that indicates an aortic aneurysm for palpation of the aorta both hands should be used and they should compress in the midline trying to go deep and see if we can palpate the vessel we should also look for any pulsatility and expansibility an expansile mass like i said indicates an aneurysm for palpation of the lower limbs we need to assess four major arteries the femoral popliteal posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis for the femoral artery 
we need to locate the inguinal crease. Due to privacy of the patient, we cannot expose the patient further. We need to palpate the ASIS. Once that is done, we need to locate the pubic tubercle. Midway in that line joining them, we can find the femoral pulse just below it. We will assess it using three fingers. At the same time, we can compare it with the radial artery on the same side to assess for a radiofemoral delay. This process should be repeated on the other side as well. The assessment of popliteal artery is slightly difficult. The ideal method is to flex the patient's knee at a 30 degree angle and going with both your hands deep inside the popliteal fossa. We'll use our fingers just like we have done for all the arteries and try to locate a pulse. In most individuals, it's not easy to locate the pulse and if you do not find one, you can simply tell. We should repeat the process on the other end as well. For palpation of the dorsalis pedis, we need to locate the extensor hallucis tendon on both feet. Just lateral to that, we can find the dorsalis pedis over the cuneiform bones. The dorsalis pedis may be absent in normal individuals. It does not always indicate arterial insufficiency. Once we are done with that, we will then move over the posterior tibial. For that, we need to go palpate behind the medial malleolus and we can do it for both limbs at the same time. This is almost always present and palpable in individuals unlike dorsalis pedis. That's it. We will now perform the Burgers test to assess arterial insufficiency. This test involves elevating both the patient's limb at about a 45 degree angle and looking for change in color of the limbs. Arterial insufficiency would give a pallor to the lower limbs and then we will ask the patient to dangle the legs on their sides and see for reactive hyperemia. Can you please lift these legs for me? I'll help you. We'll wait for about 30 seconds and see for any changes in color. In normal individuals, the color of the limbs should not change or change only mildly. We can also assess for any venous cuttering during this process. Can you now dangle it to your sides and sit up? Once the legs are dangled, we can see for reactive hyperemia. Normally, the limbs should turn pink. If there is excessive redness or rebor, and that is also indicative of arterial insufficiency. And if the limbs do not turn red at all, this again indicates arterial disease. Auscultation involves three components, the carotids, the aorta and the femoral. For the carotids, we'll be using the bell of our stethoscope and we'll ask the patient to hold their breath because the breathing sounds may interfere with the brewing. Take a deep breath, hold, thank you. We'll now auscultate the aorta using the diaphragm in the same region that we palpate the aorta. Once that is done, we can auscultate the femoral artery. For that, we need to expose the patient again and palpate the femoral artery using the landmarks that we used last time. We'll use our diaphragm again. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. This ends my examination. I would like to further perform an ankle brachial pulse index or the pressure index that is ideally done through a Doppler. And if there are any findings, I would like to do relevant examination as well. Thank you.